There we go. Excellent. So, um, yeah, thank you everyone for joining today's webinar on how to enjoy your food without the guilt of binge eating. I'm Anthony Harcher. I'm a clinical nutritionist and lifestyle medicine specialist. A little bit about me. I certainly didn't start my career this way. I started as a chemical engineer and did 15 years in the corporate world. And then after doing that time, I I was feeling unfulfilled and I decided to follow my passion. Um, and my passion was health and wellness. I've always looked after myself, I've always had an interest in health and well-being. And so I decided to go back to school and study a further two more degrees. I did a Bachelor of Complementary Medicine and a Bachelor of Nutrition and Dietetic Medicine. And now I'm doing what I love. And I certainly, one of my great passions to what I enjoy doing is sharing my knowledge with as many people as possible. And hence why I've volunteered to um, run a webinar for you, for you today on this topic. And this is a very important topic. It's uh, certainly become more apparent uh, and has only increased over this period of the pandemic. Uh, so some people have picked up some bad habits around uh, probably more around addictive behaviors uh, or binging in certain areas. It may not be food, it may be alcohol, or it may be watching Netflix, or it may be playing computer games. But certainly these are vices that we've all grabbed onto uh, during COVID um, to you know, help us manage the stress. Um, and yes, they do serve that purpose. Uh, but, you know, if we do them to the point of, uh, I guess, beyond balance, we are causing detrimental effects. Um, so that's what we're going to go into in today's webinar is really, I want you to walk away with uncovering your why or at least getting a sense of an understanding what might be driving this behavior around binge eating. Uh, so you know, at the end of the day, it's so important that we get down to the understanding what's driving it, uh, because then we can do something about it. Uh, otherwise, it's very hard to tackle um, the challenge that you're facing without understanding the drivers behind it. Uh, so we're certainly gonna look into that. Uh, we're going to then talk about uh, what you can do about it from a food and lifestyle medicine perspective. And I like to use food and lifestyle medicine because it's something that you can apply. Uh, and this webinar is going to empower you in terms of the aspects around food and lifestyle medicine that can support you and getting on top of this habit that you want to break. Uh, and as, as well as it's laying stronger foundations um, for the future. Uh, so it's, it's no quick fix, uh, you know, provide, you know, applying food and lifestyle medicine is a long game. Uh, so it's all about building strong foundations uh, so that it serves you for future success. Uh, so it doesn't happen overnight. It requires, you know, you to put time and attention, dedication, consistency, uh, to unraveling that behavior and creating new, more beneficial behaviors. Uh, so we're going to talk a bit more about that in the presentation and provide those tips around food and lifestyle medicine that will serve you. Uh, and ultimately, I'd like you to walk away with having a better relationship with food because some of the underlying drivers as to why, you know, might not be COVID related. Uh, this binge eating may have been exacerbated during COVID. However, you know, that underlying uh, binge or addiction may have been there before. Um, and this may have been driven through having a poor relationship with food. Uh, and it can be through dieting. Uh, so dieting can be one of the drivers behind this because you're denying yourself for a period of time and then you uh, lose the willpower. And, you know, it's hard to sustain willpower. There needs to be a stronger way, uh, a stronger why, um, and then you can find a better way uh, to managing it. Um, so we'll also certainly cover that during the presentation. So here I've got a photo of a plant that's managed to find its way through some timber flooring, um, a decking, timber decking. So you've got this plant growing through this timber decking and you're probably thinking, why am I showing this photo? The reason why is 
you know, if there's a strong enough why, you can find a way. Um, and obviously, this plant has succeeded amongst many probably other attempts that have been, uh, you know, um, tried by other seeds in the past. And this seed has managed to flourish. And it's the same as us, you know, we, we have the coding to succeed. Uh, we have the blueprint to succeed. And often we need to take in the right things from the environment uh, in the right doses to help us succeed. And so what I'm letting you know is that you have the genetic blueprint to succeed um, and to achieve your outcome. We just need to provide that right environment at the right doses in a balanced way and you will succeed. Uh, so there is hope. And, and certainly this, this slide, this photo is all about hope. Um, and it's not saying, you know, I'm certainly wanting you to walk away saying, yes, you can overcome this addictive behavior. Um, there is, you know, a brighter future and it's a matter of just being resourced with the education, applying the education uh, and applying the education consistently will bring you success. And really it's setting up that right environment. And we're gonna talk about that right environment in order for you to succeed. So let's get into how do you find out what's the driver behind this addiction or binging behavior? A lot of the time it's, it's happening subconsciously. And so you're just doing it. Then all of a sudden you're thinking, where did that packet of chips go? Where did that packet of biscuits go? It's just finished and I feel like I need more. Um, and so, what we need to do is take that subconscious behavior and take us to the conscious mind so that we can address it in the once, you know, once it's embedded in the subconscious and that's subconscious mind is all about automation. Uh, so we get, you know, it's about habits, you know, become automated and our body, you know, does that so that we able to have further executive function and do more um, and more good in society uh, by automating things that we do repetitively. And so we need to unravel this automated behavior because uh, it's something that you've done over and over again. Uh, it's now become automated and it's something that happens without you thinking. And so the first part of bringing it out of the subconscious is actually really bringing awareness that you're doing it. And hence, hence why you've come for this education session is that you are aware of the behavior uh, and you want to do something about it. So that's, you know, well done, because it's the first part of healing is that conscious awareness that you you have the behavior. And you're not in denial of it. You're accepting that you have the behavior and hence you've come for help. So that's an, another step um, is that acceptance. So it's being aware, accepting it. And then once we're aware and we're accepted, then we can do something about it. And hence why you're here today. And I will certainly empower you um, to help unravel that behavior that you want to break and help create more sustainable behaviors going forward. Uh, so certainly uh, is that stopping and thinking before the behavior um, really entrenches itself. So you're aware of it now. So I think it's now pausing and really thinking what's driven me over to the cupboard? What's driven me to the fridge? You know, what is causing this? Is it, you know, a phone call that has upset it, you know, provided, you know, some emotional release, you know, or is it something that someone said, or is it something that I've read in social media or on the news that's disturbing? Um, is that, you know, creating some emotions that I'm now having to deal with and I'm now those emotions are taking me to the fridge to deal with it. Um, and so once you start, you know, really noting down what's, keeps driving you to the fridge or to the cupboard, um, it, it then starts showing you some trends. Um, and it's, it may be this behavior is all about you dealing with your emotions. Um, and if it's, you know, finding a better way to deal with your emotions, then certainly we're going to cover that today. Um, there may be some more deeper underlying, um, but I think you get to that really deep down um, 
unraveling through keep asking yourself the question why just like a kid does and ask the parents why is that 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 if you keep asking yourself why and you can you know they say up to seven whys you'll eventually find the answer yourself uh, you may need some support in finding that answer but certainly with that you know that determination to finding the why can really help with finding the right solution the right path forward sometimes without knowing that why then we're really having a stab in the dark as to what solution is going to work uh, but really finding getting down to the bottom of what's driving it is really going to make an easier path forward uh, for you and your healing. Um, you know, as part of this stopping and thinking uh, and you know, working out this behavior, it's important that we acknowledge um, our body and how we're feeling. Uh, that, as I said, you know, that awareness, uh, that acceptance, uh, really helps with the unraveling of that why and so it can be, you know really connect with your body are you actually hungry it could be hunger signs now why are you hungry is it you're not eating enough protein uh, there might be not enough carbohydrates in the diet um, you know survival mechanisms might be kicking in in order to keep you alive and telling you that you're hungry or is it that you're thirsty you haven't been drinking or it could be none of the above. And so this is why it's important to connect with your body uh, to work out whether it's actually hunger or is it emotion? Uh, you know, if it's emotion, then you might not even be hungry, but the emotion's driving you to that behavior. It could be that you're picking up on your hunger signals and you are hungry and it's then working out why you're hungry. Uh, it, it might be time for you to eat. <laughs> and so therefore it's perfectly fine. Um, and you know, through this process, it's journaling can be really helpful, uh, cause it can be an outlet. Uh, so this process of you stopping thinking, connecting with your body and then journaling can be the therapy that you need to break your habit, uh, because you're stopping for long enough, um, and stopping that automation and then you know, journaling. So journaling is a great way of uh, letting out our emotions. Uh, so if we don't have someone that we can share with, then just acknowledging your thoughts and writing them down can be therapy in itself. Uh, alternatively, you know, you can call a friend uh, and have a chat to them saying, look, I just had a really terrible phone call or someone, you know, this news that's just broken is really, is really disturbing me. I don't like the way the world's unraveling. I don't like all this, you know, this talk about um, climate change and um, pandemic or whatever it may be, but, you know, just voicing your feelings is therapy. So if, if it's emotion driving it, then this process in itself, stopping and thinking, connecting with your body, asking why, and then journaling or calling a friend or talking to a loved one uh, can really help break this habit. Uh, so that can be a strategy in itself in terms of that discovering the why process and really bringing that subconscious behavior to the conscious mind is so important. So now that we have a better understanding of the drivers behind why we keep going to the cupboard and we keep going to the fridge, now we can think about strategies that can stop this behavior, stop it in its tracks, and then create more resourceful ways of tackling what that underlying driver is. Um, as I mentioned previously, that awareness and acknowledgement, so that's awareness and acceptance, is so important. I can't, you know, uh, you know, with anything, with any healing that we go through, that's the starting point. Uh, so, in in acknowledging, uh, connecting with your body, um, you know, you know, and really connecting with the way you're feeling. Uh, in this process, it's important that we be kind to ourselves. Um, 
and that we have self-love. Because uh, what can happen is if we pick up that thought or that event, so just say it's a trigger from the environment. So it's some news about the pandemic, it's not great, or it's some news about some elections that are pending, uh, that you don't like the way in which public polling is going. Um, then it's you know worth acknowledging how you're feeling about that, um, but not associating too much emotion behind it, just acknowledging it, but not allowing the emotion to build up so much and so much anger and frustration to accumulate that it, it will then result in you having some immediate, uh, you know, you go for your, that quick fix, that easy solution to really calming that emotional energy. And that could be the cupboard or the fridge. So obviously picking up your thoughts, um, stopping them in their tracks, and then but acknowledging that thought. So it's not denying that, that that thought's there and that trigger's there. It's accepting it that it's there, but it's not adding more and more emotion to it so that it becomes such a big issue that the only way you can deal with it is through your old ways of dealing with this emotion. Uh, and that's that subconscious behavior that you're wanting to change. Um, so, you know, for me, it's about acknowledging it, accepting it, and then it's saying, um, yes, it's there. However, I'm more empowered now. I'm going to make a more resourceful decision. Uh, and I'm going to look after myself uh, because I've prioritized my self-care um, beyond this environmental trigger. Uh, yes, the environmental trigger is of concern, but it's out of my control. What's in my control is the way I respond to it. Um, and that's where you want to take over the empowerment. So don't let that trigger build up all this emotion so that you know, then you deal with it through your subconscious. You want to bring it to your conscious mind um, and then deal with it rationally. Say, well, that's out of my control. I can't control the way in which people think about this election. But what I can control is how I respond to my emotions about how I feel this way. Uh, so that's really putting the empowerment back into you, you taking a rational approach to it uh, and not letting that subconscious, that automated response to take over. Um, and this comes down to the next point is around eating mindfully. So, and I guess this mindful point becomes, is, is I'm addressing it before the next point. Uh, and the next point is denying yourself. So, um, you know, it can be a, a nice strategy to have something that does comfort you. Um, but you stop at the point that it becomes binging. So it's not denying yourself of that food because you may really love chocolate. I don't want you to lose that love for chocolate because that love for chocolate is one of the joys in life that we experience. Um, but where I want to bring it up and help you is how about we stop at the point of having excess? And so we still have some, we're not denying ourselves, but we're stopping us from continu continuing to eat that product, you know, whether it be the packet of biscuits or packet of chips to the point where we finish it and we feel bad about ourselves. So this is where you can adopt mindful eating. Uh, and so this is bringing to your conscious awareness what you're about to have and really engaging it. Uh, so it's connecting with it, just like we spoke about connecting with your feelings it's really connecting with the food you're about to have, the food that you love, and making it um, a conscious decision as opposed to subconscious. So you're saying, yes, I'm going to reward myself. I'm going to have this, and I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm going to make it lasting. And the way in which you can do that is by bringing mindfulness to what the task you're about to undertake. And so that's engaging with the item you've, you've picked up it's smelling it it's engaging all your senses that's mindfulness is when we are fully present with the activity we're doing uh, so it can be that bit of chocolate you know we get that textual feel we can feel it you know it can be melting in our fingers 
Um, you know, we it, some like coffee, for example, has a really beautiful smell to it. Uh, well, some people <laughs> have a, like the smell of coffee. I'm one of those first people. Um, so I really spend some time smelling it, engaging it, not just throwing it back and then thinking, oh, that had no effect. So, <laughs> you know, I'm really still craving that. If I engage that coffee or that chocolate and so I gauge it with my smell, my eyes, uh, the texture. I mean, obviously liquids are a bit different. You don't feeling the liquid, but certainly with chocolate, you can get, engage the texture. Um, and then when I put it in my mouth, well, you can also, you know, when you're thinking about it, so this coffee, I can really connect with, okay, someone has spent their time to harvest this crop, you know, so to first of all, grow the seed, grow the bush, allow the coffee um, bean to grow. So they've looked after it for all these years, then it's harvested. So if you know, if you start putting some thought as to what goes into getting that item in front of you, start developing some appreciation, some gratitude. Uh, and that further aids to the mindful experience. Uh, so that's, you know, that real engaging um, behavior that you're creating uh, is, is is essentially taking away the disconnection that's causing you to continually hat, undertake that behavior uh, because you are and actually you know when you're in this subconscious mind it's all automated and you aren't actually experiencing what you love uh, and hence why you go back for some more like you have one biscuit but that's not enough because you haven't engaged it um, you haven't enjoyed it. And what you want to take away from it is the joy of having it. So it's certainly not denying yourself. It's certainly more about engaging in that, that activity and taking away the mindless nature that is driven by the subconscious mind. So I really want you to think about this mindful eating around the things that you love rather than denial, because denial will only further build up that want to eventually just break out and binge. <laughs> um, so I'm not, certainly don't deny yourself. I want you to really focus on the engagement of what you love and enjoy it. And that process, so once you know that chocolate's in your mouth, keep it in your mouth because that's where it's enjoyable. Once you swallow it, there's no enjoyment. All the enjoyment is when it's in the mouth and you're, you know, you're starting to break it down with the enzymes in your mouth. You're starting to break down the carbohydrates. You're starting to break down the fats. Um, that's, and, and that's where you're smelling it. Uh, that's where you taste it. It's, it's, it's all in the mouth. There's very little satisfaction. And I think, you know, when we take this mindful eating approach, we spend more time in the mouth. It enhances digestion. We slow down and we end up consuming less. So this is a key strategy. And I really want you to take this strategy, if you're not already applying it, just this mindful eating approach, not denial. It's, you know, it's accepting that you like that food and you have every right to like that food. So really embrace that food. But what we want to take into the conscious mind is how much we eat of it. We want to enjoy it and we want to enjoy it um, you know, little bits every day. Um, you know, we, we can enjoy that food every day. We just don't have abundance of it. It's about balance. It's not denying you. That denial will only result <laughs> at binging at some point. And this is why diets fail. And, uh, and my next point after mindful eating is um, telling you or informing you or empowering you not to diet and not to deny yourself. Uh, because that will only exacerbate the behavior. Uh, it's all about connecting with what you're doing, taking control, taking the empowerment into your conscious, rational part of your mind, taking it out of that subconscious uh, and allowing you to connect with it at a level that you've never connected with it before so that you only need a little bit of it. Uh, so really important, that one bite of chocolate can just 
meet every bit of satisfaction that you're seeking in that chocolate and it'll avoid you having a second bit, a third bit, a fourth bit, a fifth bit until you finish the whole block. You could probably relate to that. And then you can finish the whole block and then think, oh, I still need more. That's because you're doing it mindlessly. You're not mindful of what you're doing. Really engage in mindful behaviors um, and you'll create a more mindful approach to everything you do, uh, which enables you to adapt that irrational thinking around the task that you're engaging. Uh, and the last point here I have is making sure that you are actually eating adequate amount of protein and adequate carbohydrates because one of the drivers behind why you're binge eating may be your body on a physiological level saying that you're starving me or you're not getting enough calories. Now, if that's a conscious decision that you're taking in less calories because you have a goal to lose weight, that's fine. Um, but it's the whole process that you're connecting with the feeling that you're experiencing. I'm experiencing hunger. What's driving it? Well, I've made a conscious choice to eat less and hence my body's probably wanting more calories because it thinks that I'm not going to survive. I'm entering a famine period. And so it wants to put more motivation for me to consume food. Um, that's a natural instinct. But if you're aware of that instinct and you have a bigger goal, a bigger why, um, then you can obviously manage that feeling. Uh, however, you know, if you may be experiencing that because, and, and look, you might not want to lose weight um, and you're not eating enough carbohydrates and protein, then it's important to have that self-reflection about what have I eaten that day? What have I drunk? Because hunger can also, hunger signals can also be because you're either not eating enough fiber or you're not consuming enough water. Uh, so there's some other ones to think about too. So it's important to self-reflect uh, about what you've done that day. Um, you, you may be just dehydrated. Uh, so, you know, these are some of the strategies or it could be, okay, I'm get, I haven't eaten enough protein today, hence my body. Well, we know that protein is the building block of life and you know, you'll definitely be getting signals if you can under consume protein uh, because we cannot survive without it. It's the same as carbohydrates, good fats. Um, we need it. It's as much as we need air and water. So anyway, some food for thought there in terms of what you can do about it. I'm going to go into some more um, areas of what you can do about it that are beyond food and beyond that mindset uh, that are important to addressing uh the driver behind you know so some of the things that may be exacerbating the behavior are the areas that i'm touching on now so some of these more holistic ways of thinking about it uh, that you may not have thought about what might be contributing to your desire or need to keep going to that fridge or that cupboard uh, and continually do that um, is you may not be getting enough sleep uh, so it's important that you address the sleep side of things because it is fundamental for health success. If you are not sleeping, then the decisions you make next the next day will won't be so rational. They will be more irrational. You'll be more working in that space of having to respond to urgent needs of your body uh, to keep you functioning because you're in that survival mode uh, when we're not getting enough sleep our body's not repairing recuperating um, it feels that it needs to keep you going to keep you alive you know like it, it's a survival mechanism uh, to keep you going to keep you alive then it will start producing more of the hormones that drive that and that's the stress hormones and these stress hormones will have a flow on effect in terms of what you crave or what you desire. And so you're going to be desiring more, more simple carbohydrates. So those high GI foods, the ones that you don't probably want to eat more of, but with impaired function due to, imp you know, impaired sleep, uh, your body's just going to have a natural driver towards that because we can utilize high GI foods, utilize that energy quicker than what we can utilize fats 
what we can utilize the energy from protein. So our body's going to naturally say, I need sugar um, when you have impaired sleep. So it's important to think about how well you've slept the night before, how well you are sleeping overall, because if sleep's not great, you want to you want to address sleep because it's going to make it much harder to change this behavior if you're thinking irrationally because you're in this fight or flight stressed mode. So really important to address the, address the sleep. Uh, and so look at your sleep hygiene. Look at what you're doing during the day. And this is a hard cycle to break because if you're sleep impaired, then you want more caffeine, you want more sugar, and that's going to affect your ability to fall asleep at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a real challenging one. Uh, however, you do need to say enough's enough uh, and start addressing that day so that you consume less caffeine, carry yourself through it, just so that you can set yourself up for a good night's sleep. Um, the other thing is when you're tired, you don't want to exercise. Exercise helps uh, the propensity for our body wanting rest. So it will help with sleep. Um, so, you know, when we're tired, we generally don't want to exercise, but exercise is an important aspect for us to sleep. Um, so we do want to make some effort to move around, even though we might be a bit tired. Um, and that will only help you at the end of the day to fall asleep. Uh, so that can help break the cycle is if you just make a bit of effort to exercise, even though you might not feel like it, um, to make a decision, a rational decision. No, I'm not going to have that, that coffee because I want a good night's sleep. It's important that you break the cycle in order to help you break this bad habit that you're forming through either not sleeping, uh, you know, that's causing this binge eating or addictive behavior. Uh, and it can be driven through sleep. Uh, so the why behind why you're binge eating might be because you're not sleeping. Uh, the second point here I've mentioned is exercise. And exercise is fundamental for blood sugar regulation. So when we have dysregulation, dysregulation or inability to regulate our blood sugars because we're either taking in too much high GI foods or we're not moving our body or we're not sleeping um, or we're just hugely stressed. This will create our body not to work optimally. And part of that optimal function is utilization of sugars. Uh, so we want to utilize those sugars uh, so that they can be used as energy. But when we have this dysregulation going on, uh, we don't, we're not utilizing that energy that we're taking in. Our, our brain sending signals to, you know, to, to our conscious part of our brain saying, you need more sugar uh, because I'm just not utilizing what you've just brought in. And so this blood sugar dysregulation can either cause binge eating or be an exacerbating factor to binge eating and exercise will help with blood sugar regulation. As to with self-care, so self-care really helps us to manage stress. Um, if we're taking care of ourselves, uh, such as empowering yourself through education like you are now, uh, to make a conscious effort to exercise, to make a conscious effort to do good things around your sleep hygiene, and we, you know, that's a whole webinar in itself, and I've actually run a webinar on sleep hygiene. So uh, certainly that recording is available. Um, but these aspects are all part of self-care. So exercise is part of self-care. Sleep hygiene is a part of self-care. But it's also doing the things that you love. So, you know, in life we can get carried away with doing everything for everyone else uh, and not doing enough for ourselves. In order for us to be a great carer, to be a, a great member of community or society we need to take great care of ourselves because we cannot give what we don't have uh, so if we're not giving ourselves a lot of self-love we can't give out a lot of love so i really want you to think about what are some of the self-care things that you're not prioritizing that you love doing and really make them a priority because they will help you as i said unravel this addictive this binge behavior if we're doing a holistic approach such as you're addressing your sleep you're addressing exercise 
you're doing self-care, these are all going to help contribute you unraveling this behavior. If you only address one area, uh, it, you'll have less chance of success. You'll have the greatest success is if you start improving all these aspects of health and well-being. That's where you're going to have a significant um, step change in terms of improvement and lasting improvement. Uh, because you'll really notice the difference when you take this holistic approach to health and well-being, how much more enhanced the results are and how much better you feel and how much more, more in control you are uh, and you're operating less from that subconscious mind. You're more, in, more feeling more controlled, more rational thinking, more, you know, you've got the empowerment, it's in you um, and you can make better decisions. And the last point here I have in terms of holistic thinking um, and a holistic approach and keeping it balanced is connection. And when I'm talking about connection, I'm talking about deep connection. So it's not about having lots of surface relationships uh, where you just sort of just basically know what that person does and not much more, you know, um, it's more important to have that real deep connection. So it's, it's more beneficial for your health to have fewer relationships, but that are deeper that will give you uh, greater therapy around your managing your emotions, uh, more stress relief, more connection. Um, it, you know we're social beings we need deep connections uh we need to uh we need these deeper relationships uh for this connection so really work on deepening your relationships and really getting to know and, and it's that sort of filtering process about um i really feel you know, when i'm around this person that i walk away feeling more empowered i feel more positive i feel um more beneficial for having that coffee with that person as opposed to, you know, if you're walking away from relationships feeling drained, low energy, not uplifted, not inspired, then they're the relationships you want to spend less time on unless you're forced <laughs> into, you know, it's family. You need to just wear it over Christmas time. But, um, you know, for the most of the time, the 80% of the time, you want to be investing time into those relationships that empower, inspire you, make you feel better. And again, that's incorrect, enhancing that overall well-being of how you feel. Um, and it, how you feel will drive your behaviours. Uh, so we need to look after these deeper relationships. We need to concentrate on them. We need to build them. Uh, and that will serve you in the long run. Uh, and you know it's, it's scientifically proven how important it is to have these deep connections for our mental health and our physical health um, toxic relationships have a massive impact on mental health which affects our physical well-being you know i mentioned before blood sugar dysregulation you know cause it could be potential cause for uh, um, eating you know excessive foods that we don't want to eat uh, and part of that could be a driver behind that it could be the toxic relationships that you're either in or you're continuing to experience. So it's important that we spend less time in those toxic places, in those relationships and more time into those nurturing those relationships that are going to serve you and serve you well and actually take care of you. So in terms of thinking holistically, uh, it's important to address sleep hygiene, to exercise, to do self-care and to connect deeply. So that's that real balanced approach to, you know, unraveling that behavior. If you're doing something in all these aspects of your well-being, then it makes it so much easier to break that behavior. Uh, if you, but I mean, one of the strategies can be to tackle it one aspect at a time so you can say look i really think sleep's probably the main driver behind what i'm experiencing so it's putting more energy into the sleep and then once you feel like you've mastered the sleep then it can be moving on to other areas but then as i said all these areas are connected for example 
in order to help your sleep, you need to exercise or to move your body more. Um, another aspect of you know ensuring you have a good night's sleep is making sure you have good relationships and uh, and good connection because uh, that can help you know you at night time in terms of rest at ease that you have the support around you to tackle anything um, to take on any challenge you know if you're feeling supported uh, you have that that anchoring that connection to safety and therefore you don't feel threatened and you won't have that racing mind at night that anxious mind at night um, so that, you know deep connections deep relationships can be really that anchoring to say I have the support I need um, to go through this challenge to get through this pandemic um, and that is important uh, to that number one goal of yours to get better sleep and so it is important that you you need to because it's so interconnected and then as i mentioned before depending on what you drink and eat that day will also impact your sleep uh, so as much as you may want to put all your energy into one area by addressing all the other areas they're they're interconnected and they will help one another so i think you understand where i'm coming from uh, health good health and certainly enhanced health is going to come to you holistically. So some other techniques beyond what I've mentioned, uh, you know, one of the techniques in addition to what I've mentioned is mindfulness. I, I, I did really touch on this a lot um, before around mindful eating, but I think the important aspect or important point I wanna raise here in terms of mindfulness is not to see mindfulness as meditation. Uh, yes, meditation is a form of mindfulness, but it's not the only way in which you can be mindful. There's so many ways in which you can become mindful. And as I said, it's a matter of just connecting with your senses, being in the now. You know, when we're connected with our senses, we're in the now. So, you know, other ways in which you, you can connect to your senses is doing an activity that you love because uh, that draws you into the now. You just let go of any other thoughts about the past or worry about the future. You're totally engaged with that task at hand. It can be doing something that you love, such as dance and moving the body with the music and just that connection of music, listening and moving the body in rhythm will get you into that here and now. And, you know, you'll lose that rhythm the moment you, uh, you know, listen to that negative thought that comes into your mind. So you, you can quickly get control of your thinking and clear your mind by just dancing with music. Uh, it could be singing along with music. It could be gardening. It could be um, doing exercise. It could be spending time with a loved one that's, you know, empowers you, makes you feel inspired and more energized. Uh, there's so many ways in which we can become mindful. Breathing exercises, uh, you know, it could be yoga, Tai Chi. So there's so many ways, of, you know, which we can embrace or bring mindfulness into our day. And I, and I think the key around any of these tips is around consistency. So, you know, it, it's no good just doing it once. It's applying it consistently over time. It will become a positive habit, a positive ab attribute to your well-being. Um, and so it's as much as we want to break and unravel some of these non-resourceful habits, we need to be embracing and creating subconsciously these habits around mindfulness um, so you know we can um, automate some really healthy habits um, and you know and just you know for me exercise I don't have to think about it it's just it's embedded in my day it's something I look forward to it's, it's something I prioritize same with sleep hygiene it's a priority for me it's really automated I don't have to think about it um, it's just what I do um, one uh, another helpful strategy to initially break the behavior is that distraction strategy. So rather than, you know, so you bring it to your attention, yes, I'm heading towards that cupboard. I don't want to do this is to change tasks to maybe just step outside, breathe some fresh air, get some sunlight. It could be ring a friend that makes you feel, um, that makes you laugh, or it could be, 
uh, just engage in some other activity that brings you joy uh, and will take you away from whatever took you into that subconscious behavior towards that fridge or cupboard. Um, so yeah, there's, there's many aspects of which you can, you know, embrace this distraction strategy. And over time, it, uh, this distraction strategy will be, you know, second nature to you. You know, the minute you feel that you're going towards something, a habit you want to break, um, you know, you go to, you go to this distraction strategy that really works for you. And that distraction strategy could be mindfulness, for example, you know, doing one to two minute meditation or one to two minutes of breathing exercises. Another helpful technique that I've recently come across is the emotional freedom technique. Uh, this, you know, you can Google this. Um, there's, you know, YouTube videos about this technique. What I love about it, it can be self-applied like mindfulness can be self-applied and you can apply it the moment that you become aware of this behavior that you want to break. And then you can relax yourself by applying this technique. And so it's a combination of acute pressure points as well as um, psychology. Uh, so uh, you apply the two in combination. So it's another term for it is uh, tapping therapy. Uh, so that's another thing you could look up is uh, tapping therapy. Uh, so it's and it works well for those that can't sit with you know sit still and meditate and they need to be doing something. This tapping therapy can be really helpful for those individuals that need to be doing something uh they can't just sit still and sort of let their thoughts go they need to be applying themselves so this emotional freedom technique can be really advantageous and as i've already mentioned you know uh, deep breathing exercises is really something easy that we can connect with straight away it doesn't cost us any money it's just breathing it's connecting with breath connecting our senses around um, just the pro, you know, like, so breathing is subconsciously and thank God it works subconsciously. <laughs> um, but, you know, we can also take control of it. Um, and, and that taking control of it by, you know, well, first of all, bringing your awareness to the breathing uh, and then drawing in the air as long as you want to draw it in or as long as you can draw it in you know, hold it in your lungs, you know, feel your lungs expand and then breathe it all out. Um, that process, doing that through a few cycles, that deep breath. Uh, so it's really expanding that diaphragm. It's not shallow breathing. It's breathing in through the nostrils, uh, really letting that diaphragm expand uh, and then exhaling and exhaling as much as you can, getting out that carbon dioxide, uh, alkalizing the body. You know, I mentioned before this webinar about the importance of alkalizing the body. One of the ways in which you can alkalize the body is through drawing in oxygen, exhaling carbon dioxide. So uh, not only it's going to help distract us, it can, you know, it's going to help bring down our stress hormones, which I said can be a driver, a driver or exacerbating factor to binge behavior or addictive behavior. So it de-stresses us. Uh, it alkalizes our body, um, alkalizes the blood. It is a form of mindfulness. Uh, it clears our mind. Uh, it energizes us. So there's so many benefits to deep breathing exercises. Again, Google it. You'll come, there's so many ways in which you can do deep breathing. Uh, you'll find one that you like and that you can apply anytime. Uh, so, yeah, I really suggest you get connected with a deep breathing technique. Really important. Okay, this is my concluding uh, slide and the concluding points to this webinar. So food is, I want you to see it as nourishment. It connects us. It connects us, you know, it helps connect us socially. And it's meant to be enjoyed. Uh, so I really don't want you to have this negative connection or negative association with food. Uh, I don't want you to see it as calories. The minute you see it as calories, you're weighing this, counting this, you're creating disconnection. You're creating dis distaste, uh, hate um, towards that. And that just, that, you know, feeling a disconnection from food, uh, we were certainly missing one of the joys in life. 
but we're also denying ourselves and that denial can just build up until the willpower, willpower is no longer strong enough and you can just let go and then just overdo it. So I'd much rather you take a more balanced approach, a more connected approach. So connecting with food, uh, embracing it, not seeing it as a calorie, not counting it. The more you do mindful eating as we discussed, the more you'll embrace the food, the more you'll enjoy it, the more you'll eat less of it. So that's the key, mindful eating around these foods you enjoy, that will help you take a balanced approach to food. All these techniques um, will help just help your health overall, uh, help you take a more balanced approach to your health and well-being, as opposed to something you jump on and jump off. Dieting is, it just doesn't achieve any results. Um, what you want to do is, is embrace food, embrace a well-balanced diet. Uh, you know what is important to you? Fruit and vegetables are key. You know, we need some protein through our meats. Um, we need seeds, legumes, nuts. You know, we need all these food for different reasons. Um, they bring different vitamins, different amino acids, uh, different minerals. Uh, they really serve us and they can serve us at an energetic level, such as living food has that energetic property that can really help us. So connect with food. Don't disconnect with it by counting it, by seeing it as calories or seeing it as good or bad. I really want you to take away that food's neither good or bad. Uh, it's really how you perceive it, isn't it? Like at the end of the day, um, that what you consider bad food can actually be good food for someone else with a different goal. For example, High GI food is really beneficial for athletes when they're competing and training because it's energy that we can quickly assimilate and utilize high GI. So, you know, what's the point of saying or isolating that food group as saying that's bad? High GI food can serve us for a particular goal, can serve us for a point in time. And so we just want to see it as food. Um, and what you want to concentrate in is your health goals and aligning your food, your lifestyle to supporting those health goals, not seeing and polarizing and labeling food as good or bad. It doesn't help you, doesn't help you labeling it as calories. Uh, and at the end of the day, what's the point of putting a whole lot of excessive worry and thought about the food you're about to eat? isn't this a first world problem? You know, we certainly in the developed world, I mean, in, in the undeveloped world or the developing world, they don't have this issue. Um, it's such a first world problem. And so why make such a point of it? Why make it allow it, allow it to ruin our day because we're so hung up over what I'm about to eat. If you really want what you're about to eat, as I said, do it mindfully. You'll eat less of it. You'll enjoy it. You'll move on. Um, and you won't be denying yourself. You'll be connecting with what you're doing, connecting with your body, connecting with how you feel. And overall, you'll have a much more balanced approach to health and well-being. Health and well-being is not something you turn off and on. It's something you work towards consistently uh, in a balanced way, and you'll get the results long term. It's a long game. It's not something you just jump on. I'm doing a six-week challenge. That's when I do health. And then when I'm not doing the six-week challenge, here's, I just do what I want to do. What you want to do is a much more sustainable approach to health and well-being. It's holistic balance. And it's a lot of what we spoke about today. So I really hope you enjoyed today's webinar. Uh, feel free to connect with me on uh, socials. Uh, so I'm on the, you know, I have a website, I have, uh, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, so it's me and my wellness. Uh, there's lots of free information, lots of other free webinars on other topics. As I mentioned, stress management, uh, they're on uh, sleep, uh, they're on uh, detoxing, um, longevity, eating for longevity. Uh, so there's lots of useful free resources on my website or on my YouTube channel. Uh, so just yeah, Google me and my wellness, you'll come across this or go to my website as a starting point. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, join uh, the webinar today, uh, you know, really empowering yourself to make better decisions 
Uh, and I hope there's something of value in attending today. So uh, thank you for attending. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm here now for questions and answers. So I'm just going to stop the recording. So you